expands. Uh, the more you give, the more you get. Krishna has a special soft spot in his heart for those devotees who like to explain his philosophy to the other devotees. He says that never would there be a devotee as dear to me as him. Uh, so if you really want pleasure, if you really want to, uh, to get the benefits of the esoteric teaching, spread this teaching to others and you will see immediately you will get so much mercy from Krishna. Uh, it's very, very nice. Uh, take responsibility for spreading Krishna's message and Krishna will reward you beyond your ability to receive it. <laughs> you feel like you're in an ocean of mercy and you can only drink one drop at a time. Uh, so uh, our ability to even absorb Krishna's reciprocation is, is limited. You know, but his mercy isn't limited. So uh, grab yourself a piece of that mercy and, and share it. That's what this is all about. So how are we doing? Do we have any questions? No questions? I can't believe it. No questions. No questions? Huh? Finished. I'm finished talking about this. There's still more anarthas to cover, and we'll cover those in later sessions. No questions, huh? Okay. Okay, grab the mic. Can you mention um, that uh, if you desire for mukti, um, you won't get any benefit because you just merge your whole entire existence into uh, the effulgence? Yeah, Sayuja Mukti, it's called. And uh, you mentioned uh, that um, in order to have uh, pleasure or consciousness, uh, the, the three things you need to have subject, object, and the relationship. Yeah. But um, I also remember that, um, uh, and you also mentioned that uh, you can't have it from your own self. You can't have those uh, things. Okay. But uh, you can't have this uh, kind of relationship from when you contemplate your own soul, right? or this pleasure. Or, Why not? Or yourself. This, this is uh, what I, uh, uh, this is where I get confused where, when you mentioned that uh, you merge your entire existence into the effulgence, yeah. but at the same time, uh, because there's no relationship with anyone, there's no object, right? Um, but at the same time, if you contemplate your own self, at the same time, you mean at the time of liberation? No, uh, I mean uh, when you contemplate yourself, you you receive pleasure from it. The, the soul when itself. When you contemplate your, your consciousness. Your consciousness, yeah, yes. Your soul. You, you, you receive pleasure from, from that. Yeah, right. So does that mean you actually have to go deeper than uh, the effulgence before you can actually... Like, deeper? Like uh, there are different stages of uh, liberation or realizations, right? The, the Brahman... You mean beyond Brahman realization? Beyond no, that is Brahman realization. When you contemplate yourself, when you realize yourself as Brahman, as pure consciousness, that is Brahman realization. Mm -hmm. Now, but in that state, one is both the subject and the object, so you and can has a relationship with oneself. Okay. okay. The duality, or actually the trinity, is still there. Oh, okay. That, that's what, uh, where I was confused. So yeah. I thought in it Mukti, was so okay. those distinctions or the, the relationship is erased. Mm -hmm. If everything is one. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. uh, really up to the desire of uh, the individual soul. Yeah, of course. Okay. As always. As always. Desire and intention are what determine the result of everything that we do. 
you know. So we can do the same thing, but with a different intention, and it gives a different result. Depends on what we want. Content and context. Content and context. The meaning of any particular content is always determined by the context that we hold it in. So if we're holding this meditation on consciousness as a means of attaining final, you know, liberation, it has a different effect than if we hold the same type of meditation in the context of Brahman realization on the way to Paramatma and Bhagavan realization. You see? Then it's not Sayuja Mukti anymore. Then it's just Brahman realization. And it does not produce the uh, same result of spiritual suicide. Instead, it gives us life. So, so basically, just the intention is uh, the, mo the most important thing, if the intention of... It's the all important. Everything, all the elements are important, because they all three determine what is the actual result. See, if we say that um, I want to contemplate the nature of my, con my own consciousness, in order to attain what? You see? It's just like if I save up money in my bank account, huh? for what purpose? Do I want to buy a car? Do I want to buy a house? No. Do I want to take a trip somewhere? Do I want to buy some new clothes? What's, what's, the, what's the purpose I'm saving for? You see? So similarly, when we do any kind of spiritual process, we have to understand, we have to know in advance, why am I doing this? What do I want to get out of it? What is the aim? What is the intention? It's like a bank account. It's the same thing. We're, we're storing up energy in a certain way, storing up impressions in a certain way. One of the values of those impressions or one of the factors included in those impressions is why are we doing this process? What is the result we're trying to get out of it? We should determine the result before we begin the process and think of the result as we perform the process, and then we get that result. See, well, a lot of people just perform spiritual activities more or less mechanically, without thinking well, what the result is that they want to attain. And then they don't get any result, and they wonder why. <laughs> yeah, they can't go beyond their minds. It's like they're just... Uh, you can't repeating. go beyond these three factors. huh? is always these same three factors, the subject, the object, and the relationship. So if I perform some spiritual activity, which is I am the subject, right? the activity is the object, and the relationship is the purpose for which I do that process. I'm chanting my mantra. Why? Because I want to attain pure devotional service. You can chant the same mantra with the intention to attain Brahman realization. And that's, and that's what you get. Remember, the mantra, especially the name of God, is like a desire tree. Whatever you wish for is what you get. So you have to know before you start what is the optimum object. What is the ultimate attainment that you can get from that. And uh, while chanting, we should also contemplate on, on this. Yes, of course. Yeah. Is there more question? No. Okay. Oh. Shri Vaishampaya Nauvacha Shutra Dharmana Shesha Napavanani Chasarvashaha Yudhishthira Shantanavam Purareva Bhyabhashata Yudhishthira Uvacha Kime Kangaivatam Loke King Vapye Kamparayanam 
Shams to Van Nityan, but to Kartigo Havay. 